everybody. This is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. And uh, today we're going to step back a little bit from SDRs and go back to some of the uh, fundamentals here. Um, W1VLF. Um, actually, we're going to use an SDR to prove some of the points that we're going to be talking about today. So, in front of me, what do I have here is my one of my favorite uh, AM broadcast reception radios here. This is an old Grundig. Um, and then my my other favorite one of my other favorite radios is the is the venerable ICF 2010. And we're gonna talk about superheterodyne. Right? Everybody's heard that term, superheterodyne. But what is it and what what does it mean and how does it work? And why, why are the, uh, the receivers of nowadays, SDR, direct conversion receivers, not subject to some of the problems? Uh, we're going to cover a whole bunch of different things here, but I'm going to step in front of the camera, and I'm, I mean uh, in front of these radios. I'm going to show you something and uh, see if you could tell me why it's happening. Then after we go over the, um, the PowerPoints I have, uh, you should have a pretty clear explanation of what's going on. So let me uh, let me just step in here. Wow, stuff is falling out all over the place. All right, so we're going to turn on the Sony here. First, enjoy the day. It's tuned to uh, 2010. God bless you. And, and excuse me, 1080. And right? Pretty strong signal, as you can see. I think you can see it there. It's a uh, S9 or almost, you know, right up, right up to the limit, just about. Now I'm going to tune the radio on the bottom here across the band, as if I was tuning for another channel. And all of a sudden, we have a really strong carrier that just covered up our local station. What's going on? Let's go up to something else. Let's try uh, 10, 10:30. This is a station in Boston. You know, it's coming through, right? Well, look at that. There's that carrier again. Just by tuning the radio on the bottom. The heck is going on here? And the other thing is, if I tune to uh, 455 kilohertz, excuse me, down here, I can hear stations that are being received on this radio. Weekdays, noon to three, on the time. The bottom one. And another another thing that happens that's interesting is, let's go back to 1030 again. Excuse me. As I tune this radio... Okay, see the amplitude of the signal go up? What the heck is going on here? So I've got a couple of different things happening. One is I've got something that's going on with this radio is enhancing the reception of this radio. And as I tune lower in frequency, something's being generated by this radio and is coming out of into this radio and causing interference. And if I tune to 455 kilohertz here, you'll be able to hear the signals that I'm tuned on this radio on here. So let's go over to the computer desk and we'll talk about what's going on here. I made a little spreadsheet to be able to show all the frequencies and the interferences and things that happen, and uh, we'll go from there. But I'll give you a, a clue on this one. Let's go back to 1030 for just a second. And as I tune this across the band, whoops, went too far. So there's there's an example, right? That's that's without this one being tuned. It's the same frequency that I'm tuning. Okay, very close. I'll give you a clue. Remember this guy? Yeah, I mean, it makes you really nervous. 
office when something similar is happening inside here. So let's go over to the computer desk, take a look at what's going on, and then we could do some experiments with these exact frequencies. Okay, so we're here at the computer desk, and I put together this little PowerPoint presentation. And um, there's three or four pages to it here, but that's nice. Uh, so the first page is we're, we're going to sort of define what it is where we're, our objectives are, right? So the first is going to be an overview of the super hat. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, secondly, what caused that interfering carrier on the Sony radio? By the way, I'm going to refer to these two as the Grundig and the Sony radio, uh, just to uh, keep things straight. Um, so what caused that interfering carrier on the Sony radio when I was tuning the, the Grundig? Um, something's coming out of that radio, right? Some, something's being radiated, and we're, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, what caused the signal enhancement on the Sony radio again when I was tuning the Grundig? That was another uh, sort of artifact or anomaly that I showed in the, very, in the opening of this. Um, that's something we'll cover. And then what could you, why could we hear stations at 455? When the Sony radio was tuned to 455 kilohertz, which is the standard IF for an AM portable radio like that, uh, why could we hear stations? Um, that were being tuned on the Grundig. So that's something to think about. Also, what we're going to talk a little bit about splitters here, and I mean just a little bit, but what, what's some important characteristics of uh, splitters? Say you have a number of receivers. Um, what, what would we consider to be important characteristics? And then also we're going to take a look. After we look at all of these on the radio, we're going to take an SDR and we're going to look at what's really happening because a lot of people now nowadays can, can see waterfall and spectrum displays. So we'll take a look at that uh, on the SDR. We'll, we'll see if any of the things that we're talking about here are true. And the SDR will tell us whether they're true or not. So... Let's say you have a, and this is the this is in the uh, the old days, right? The the purely purely analog days, right? What do you what um, what what do we have here? We have a mixer, which is going to take some signals in, two signals in, a local oscillator, and the RF amplifier. I mean, excuse me, the RF. So you have an antenna, and in the case of the Grundig, it's a ferrite tuned loop inside. And so you've got to make that tuned loop resonate. Excuse, let me get that out of there. You also have to amplify those signals. Then you have to put them into a mixer, which will down convert them to 455 kilohertz. Now, why do you do that? Because this is a filter which you can characterize. You can build several stages at 455 kilohertz and make it have the passband and shape that you want and never have to worry about it having to tune from, say, 535 to 1700 kilohertz. Everything is down converted by moving this oscillator frequency, this local oscillator around, right? So inside that 455 megahertz, portion of the radio there's also amplifiers and tuning and all this stuff radiates every everything here radiates uh, if you have an amplifier here that's tuning 610 there's some signal that will radiate out of that radio no, nothing's perfect right um, after you've uh, amplified that and it's been mixed down to 455 kilohertz, you have more, you have filtering and you have amplifiers. And guess what? Some of that's going to radiate. And this is the real big one over here, the local oscillator. And I did a spreadsheet, which I'll show you in a second. And I'll highlight those when I'm tuning uh, the radio around so you can see what's happening. But if you want to receive a frequency at 610 kilohertz, the local oscillator is going to have to run at 1065 kilohertz. So if I tune the Grundig to 10 to 610, the local oscillator is running at 1065, right? Mix these two together and take the minus side of this. So subtract 
610 from 1065 and you get your 455 kilohertz which is your IF so I know that this local oscillator is running 455 kilohertz above the signal that I'm interested in receiving so if I go to 620 kilohertz on the radio tuning the Grundig it's gonna have an oscillator frequency 10 kilohertz higher than this right so let me pop out of here real quick and we'll go down and look at this uh, spreadsheet so if you're receiving this is for AM frequencies here green highlights the ones that will actually fall within the AM broadcast band and by the way this happens in the um, oh, too big oh all right let's just go to 200 percent maybe that's or 100 percent oh heck all right uh by the way this happens in the fm broadcast band as well except the if frequency i guess i'll just put that back to 100 because it's just too hard to see okay the if frequency is 10.7 megahertz so these same things these these oscillator frequencies the the if and the tuned frequency this stuff all takes place in the AM, the FM band as well, but we're going to just concentrate on the AM band. So here's our 610 kilohertz right here. And with that 610 kilohertz, if I want to have a 455 os um, mix down happening, I need to supply an oscillator of 1065. Here's some of the stations we're going to go to. Let's say we go to 660, right? I think I could do that just by going like this. 660. If I want to tune 660 on that radio, the oscillator going into the mixer has to be 1115 kilohertz. If I want to mix, uh, do 710, which is WOR in New York, it has to be at 455 kilohertz higher, which is 1165. So as you go up in frequency, you can see the oscillator is going higher and higher and higher. Now, at some point, it goes out of the out of the tuning range of the of the radio, and you no longer can throw a carrier, if you want to call it that, on top of a, another frequency. So the highest we probably can go here uh, really is twelve hundred and fifty kilohertz, my, uh, plus the four fifty five equals seventeen oh five. So I'll what I'll do is I'll just like clip these when I when I go to do this for instance like when I when I go to do 1010 out there I'll just clip this out so you'll see that if I'm tuning to um, 1010 on the Sony radio here and we know the oscillator is going to be 455 kilohertz above this then I'm going to tune the Grundig to 450 uh, 1465 okay so let me just go back up here so Every one of these things has some amplifiers associated with it, right? The uh, RF tuning and RF amplification and then the mixer. and then, So every one of these can radiate. These aren't, in the older days, these weren't, um, you know, really well shielded circuits. And you'll just see how far away. I think I can, I can go 10 or 15 feet and still uh, tune the Grundig to a frequency and it'll still affect the other one the uh, Sony radio in fact in school in 1975 <laughs> give you an idea of how, how old I am here that was my high school last year of high school or trade school we built a receiver uh, from scratch this was a solid state receiver transistorized uh, but one of the fun things that we used to do is when someone else was was tuning up their radio we would go over and adjust our our radio to the local oscillator so that the local oscillator frequency was the same as the frequency they were trying to listen to and so there was heterodynes all over the place we we had we had a blast with that um, okay so that's a basic overview and that's really basic there's a lot of a lot of things that I that I didn't talk about and missed so I'm sorry if I did that um, here here's the the FM equivalent right the local oscillator is 10.7 above the received station so 104.5 what's the local oscillator 115 all right so let's just talk about this splitter network for for a second am I in the right spot yeah I'm in the right spot what well, 
Why do we care about the splitter? What, or or what, what do we care? What do we care? Let's say you have four receivers, like we do in this in this demonstration here, and so you want an R, an equal RF out coming to all your receivers, or or maybe you don't. But if you do, you're using a, you're using a splitter like this. You want it to be able to cover the frequencies of interest. Let's just say for for the course of t uh, talking here, it's 100 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. So that's one spec that you're interested in. Um, we need isolation between the ports. Now, what do you mean isolation? That means that the signal comes in here, it goes out this port, but anything that's coming back out of this receiver, let's go back up to this, right? All this crap is radiating. Stuff from this amplifier can go back out the antenna port. Whoops, I completely screwed it up, went too far. So we don't want the local oscillator frequency sneaking out of here and going into here and back into this radio or this radio or this radio. Um, we don't want some other oscillator that happens to be in there. Let's say a, a BFO oscillator or something sneaking out of here and going back in. So a good splitter will have 30 dB of isolation between the ports. That means that if there is some noise and garbage coming out of this receiver, it will be 30 dB lower going into this receiver. Port to port isolation is what we're looking for. By the way, you don't ever get something for nothing, right? Um, this splitter, because you're dividing the power in half and then in half again, you have 6 dB of loss. So if you had an, uh, an S9 here, coming in let's say uh if if your s meter was reading correctly it would be 6 db less here so sa 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 that's each s unit in the hf band is equal to roughly 6 uh 6 db if you're if it's working properly or if you had let's say minus 73 dbm coming in here which is s9 you would have 6 db lower so it'd be it would be minus 79 that's purely physics happening there and then there's also passive losses because you're not just connecting these things together you're not just like saying oh i'm going to take all four receivers wire them all together you have uh um, transformers and capacitors and inductors in here that form this splitting network and those are usually a db to db and a half something like that but that's something certainly that you can afford to uh, to lose if you're running a, a decent antenna system and some of these are amplified some you know some of these multi couplers like this some of them will have bandpass filtering you know output so this receiver here okay uh yeah it's a 6 db loss but i only want the am broadcast band so i have a bandpass filter here this receiver is just going to be for WWV, WWV. So I have a 10 megahertz bandpass here. This one's CHU Canada. So I have a 7.8, uh, what is it, 7850 now. And, and this one here is uh, 10 megahertz. So I have, so you can have gain in here and you can have losses in here. And then you can put, uh, you know, the, and the other thing that will happen is if you put a bandpass filter here, let's say you put a bandpass filter here because this is your AM broadcast rig, right? All you're listening to on this is AM frequencies. So you have a 530 to uh, 1700 bandpass. Any garbage that's outside of that, um, what's the word? Exhibits, not exhibits. Um, incur sees losses trying to come through that filter and then another 30 dB here. So anyway. That's that's the scoop there, and if uh, if you want to put something in the comments, uh, questions, or or whatnot, uh, you can do that. But basic that's a basic overview of of what's going on. And number six here is I'm going to take a couple of coils, and I'm going to go uh, take a coil and bring it over to the Grundig receiver, and we're going to patch that little coil it's just a pickup coil nothing special about it in fact it's just something i pulled out of the junk box and we're going to put that and we're going on the um the sdr and then we're going to tune to uh, 1065 we're going to tune we're going to tune this radio the grundig to 610 kilohertz and then we're going to look at 1065 and we're going to see that oscillator of a huge huge signal all right so let's go over there and, and do that, and uh, let me get set up in the other room. 
Hey, just wanted to show you the setup here before uh, before we uh, actually get started. This is the the Grundig radio here, Grundig Majestic. What is it? Thirty two sixty five, I think. And I'll be tuning. This is the tuning knob. Where are we? Let me turn it on so there's a light. Okay, so you can see. And actually, it's backwards, right? Look at counterclockwise or clockwise takes you lower and so if I get messed up that's why and the other radio of course is the Sony 2010 and I have the uh, GoPro here on a stick <laughs> Tele uh, camera on a stick telescoping uh, piece here and it goes up so I can wiggle it, aim it around the room and also elevate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking the, the pictures from here. Let's turn this on. That means it could be you, your best man. Your okay, I'm going to be taking man. the pictures from here. And then I'll zoom in closer. Um, okay, and then afterwards we'll set up the uh, SDR. And here's that coil. You know what this is? This is a coil from a crossover network. Uh, in a speaker just something I grabbed off the uh, bench there 120 mi micro henry's 0.12 milli henry's anyway so that's what we're gonna do all right so let me get that set up and away we go okay so here we are with our uh, cheat sheet and the uh, Grundig radio at the bottom the Grundig radio at the bottom is tuned to 540 kilohertz and that should put a carrier somewhere around 990, 995. This is 990 we're listening to. And there's that carrier by tuning the Grundig to 540. So the next one we're gonna try is 1010, which is winds in New York, okay? And so that's this one. And in that case, I should have to tune up in frequency on the Grundig to uh, 1010 is uh, equal to something like 560. We'll move this up. Another huge carrier there, right? Okay, so uh, we'll go to 1030, Boston Station. As I tune the Grundig up again, another big one. Let's go to 1080. Where was he from? Huge signal from uh, Hartford, Connecticut, about 13, about 13 miles away. At 1080, that means the to put out the interfering carrier at 1080, the radio is tuned to 630. So I'll just do a couple more. 1320 is another one here. Okay, whoop, that's got music on it, so I better tune up quickly and find the, uh, the carrier. 1320. And 1360. Another one, tune the carrier up a little more. So... This, this radio right now is tuned to something like 900 kilohertz on the Grundig, and it's putting out that big whopping carrier at 1360. Okay. Yeah, revolution has already caused decades. So now we're going to simulate that um, the tuning of the front end and with that amplifier and everything running and the radiation that comes out at the fundamental, the RF frequency. So here's 1010 out in New York, right? And I'm going to tune the radio here to 1010. Slowly move it up, tweaking it back and forth. For Let's try 1030. 1030 is, uh, you know, fairly weak here. It's out of Boston. Tuning again. 1050, I think. 1050. As you can see that. And let's see, 1320 even. Oh, let me turn that down. Don't want to get pinched. Yeah, 1320 is so strong that it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But anyway, next step here is we're going to look at the, um, we're going to take the SDR and we're going to put the sensing coil on and we're going to look at these three phenomenons again. And then uh, we'll do one more thing. In fact, I'm going to do that now. Let me, uh, let me stop this and uh, I'll set up the next quick, a quickie demo. Okay, so I'm tuned to winds, right? 1010. Now I'm going to tune this radio. 
down here to about 10.10. And her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband Pretty strong, we huh? could not put on. Now I'm going to go down to find that. There's the big carrier, the, the local oscillator. And we're going to move that radio over here, which is about 10 feet away, and we're going to do the same demonstration. So let's take that radio with its almost a full pin. Here we are, 10 feet away with almost a full pin. I'm gonna go back to, uh, you probably hear it. Go back to this radio and move it off frequency. Actually, let's point it this way. Okay, guys, I got the uh, radio turned around backwards here. And as you can hear, even with the volume down, I'm able to hear a little bit of audio coming from it. But what we really want to concentrate on is this screen right here. Let me move this out of the way. That's our pickup coil it's sitting on top of the chair right now. So we're tuned to 455 kilohertz and there's a lot of, lot of crap in the air down here with 455 kilohertz. But we're gonna do this anyway and see what happens. So here's what we're hearing. More, more than likely stuff coming out of the laptop, right? So, but let's take our coil and bring it over here in the back of the radio. Now I'm, I'm tuning, I'm tuned to 610 on the front of the radio, on the front of the Grundig, but on this radio, I'm tuned to 610, uh, 455. So let me just slide this around. Let's see what kind of signal comes out of there. You can hear the delay. I'm going to tape that right in place there. And then we're going to tune across the front of the, the radio, um, the Grundig. We pull it away. So you can see all that stuff leaking, radiating out. One more, one second. Okay. There. Forty over S nine. And I'm going to tune this radio. Let me get in a better position here, and you'll see the radio as I tune across the band. That's again with this coil just stuck to the back. I'm not sure what the heck that is. So there's some signals emanating out of the back of this. Sorry about the unsteady camera work here. So. Alright, so let me pause one more time. We're going to look at that carrier that comes out. 
Okay, folks, I just want to uh, let me turn the volume down here because you don't need to hear it. You just want to see that carrier. I'll just show you this real quick. This is the antenna that I'm using to sense the local oscillator leakage. Okay, it's a single turn shorted on itself. So very, very small antenna. And I'm going to shove it underneath the radio. Hey, you probably already see where that where that carrier is, right? Underneath the radio. And now as I turn the um, the dial, you'll be able to see that carrier, that local oscillator leakage moving up and down the frequency. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to stop it right at where the S meter is there. So we're talking about uh, like 30 over <laughs> S9 with that tiny little loop. And I'll move it all the rest of the way up to band 2. So there's that. Okay, I'm slowly moving it along here. We'll stop it right in the middle again. Somewhere in there. Yeah. So a lot of leakage from these old radios. So that's it. That's the story behind uh, the local oscillator leakage and the IF leakage and everything coming out of that, that particular Grundig radio. So sorry this didn't really come out as good as I had anticipated. I spent a lot of time thinking about this, how to get signals, how to explain it and everything. But um, I did the best that I could, so hopefully you got something out of it. And if you did get something out of it, please uh, leave me a like or, or and subscribe so I can get my uh, viewership up a little. I promise the next one won't be won't be so bad. Uh, if you go back and look, there's a link in the description to this video of about 120 other videos that I did, maybe more now. Um, and if you really enjoyed this, there's a super thanks button where you can throw a buck or two towards the channel to support this, uh, the, the work here. So um, I think that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate everybody. W1VLF, I'm out.